Welcome to the program. As part of the uh, educational and public access features of our station, we'd like to introduce uh, Carmen Trutanich. He's uh, a candidate for the Office of City Attorney, City of Los Angeles, and he is uh, in studio with us. He's taking time from his busy schedule to uh, share some questions and answers on this very important role for our city, City of Los Angeles, one of the biggest cities in the United States, with uh, many diverse peoples and issues and problems. And Carmen has had the courage enough to take on this role and want to become city attorney. So uh, I'm pleased that he's here. We're going to ask him a little questions. Carmen, first of all, thank you for attending and coming in from your busy schedule. Thank you for having me here today. Uh, Carmen, tell us a little bit about your background. I mean, I know you're an attorney. You give us a little background about your practice and how long you've been practicing and sure. so on. I, um, I grew up in San Pedro, California, which is down by the harbor. Yeah. Uh, I come from basically a trad very traditional family. I'm one of seven children. Um, my father worked in the canneries, uh, worked there for 40 years. Um, I was lucky. Um, in my family, we didn't even know a lawyer. Um, I was lucky enough to, to attend uh, uh, USC and graduate, and I went on to law school. I got my MBA, my BA, and my JD. When I, um, when I graduated uh, from school, I went into a private practice not, not knowing really anything about the law and uh, opened my doors in San Pedro and, and had a pretty good practice. Um, after a couple of years in practice, I decided it was time for me to do something that really learn how to be a good lawyer. And I, I joined the district attorney's office of Los Angeles County. When did you do that? Uh, that was back in 1980, 81, somewhere in okay. that area. And I, um, I served uh, until 1987 in the district attorney's office. I, um, I spent um, a few years in the misdemeanor um, prosecutions. Okay. I, um, I spent some years in juvenile crime. And then I went on to the hardcore gang unit. Mm -hmm. I uh, was stationed in Compton, California, in the gar hardcore gang unit. I tried a number of uh, murder cases. Um, no, uh, death, uh, I handled a number of death penalty cases. I did a nine-month jury trial, which is, believe it or not, that gentleman is now going through his final appeals some 20 wow. years later, wow. which That's is a, a, a commentary in and of itself of our, of our system. Mm -hmm. um, from there, I was transferred to the environmental crimes unit in the Environmental Crimes Unit of the District Attorney's Office, that was a very fledgling unit. And in fact, at that time, there had been no felony trials in the state of California at all. And while in the Environmental Crimes Unit, I tried the very first felony in the state of California. I did the very first felony prelim in the state of California. And I wrote the very first felony warrant in mm -hmm. the state of California. And I've got the very first felony conviction in the state of California. To this day, the jury instructions that I wrote in that trial are used in court on uh, felony environmental prosecutions. So when, when you were involved in that, it was you were really going into new territory. At oh, exactly. Time. In fact, let me give a little antidote. Sure. Um, having come from the gang unit, and believe me, at the time that, I, that that was going on in 1984, 85, there were not very many people wanting to go from the hardcore gang unit into the environmental crimes unit because the hardcore gang unit at that time was a federally funded unit in the district attorney's office, mm. and it was the most elite unit in the district attorney's office. And um, actually, when I went to environmental crimes, I actually took a death penalty case with me to, uh, to environmental crimes because I wanted to still continue to be active in the gang prosecution. While I was doing that death penalty case, I was handling environmental crimes through the environmental crimes unit of the district attorney's office. And, and, and an interesting sidelight in that is that when I got to the environmental crimes unit, I decided the only way we can do this is by focusing on the companies as they operate. You're talking about the commercial companies that have waste and have pollutants and so on. Companies that would, would be generating a hazardous waste, okay. and those companies that we knew of that were mishandling that hazardous waste at the time. Okay. So what I did is I took a gang search warrant, and I scratched out the name of the gang. I wrote in the name of a company. I went okay. down and scratched out the caliber of the weapon, and I wrote in the name of a chemical. Okay. Made the facts match that scenario, mm -hmm. followed that template, took it over to the CCB, the Criminal Courts Building, mm -hmm. got a judge to sign it, 
and we were on our way. And that uh, started basically the toxic waste strike force for Los Angeles County. Well, that's very innovative. So that, what really motivated you to do that and to see that there was an analogy there between a regular criminal prosecution and, and something in the environmental law? Is it, is it apparently you're, you're the innovator of this? In, in the environmental area, the environmental search warrant, the very first search warrant for a felony case was written by me. Interesting, yeah. And, and, and uh, basically, it comes from having served hundreds of search warrants and being involved in hundreds of search warrants in the grime, uh, in the gang area. No. Um, having seen how those, what it takes to get a judge to sign a search warrant, what it takes to get probable cause necessary to, mm -hmm. to enter a home, I knew that the only way you were going to uh, apprehend someone who is illegally disposing of hazardous waste when it happens within the four squares of a building is you know not by some infrared x-ray yeah. but you're gonna have to get inside no that reason. building and see how they do it and the way you do it is via a search warrant and we got a search warrant and the rest is history well that's very innovative Carmen and a actually uh, this is something that I would think you'd, you would use in your uh, quest for the uh, city attorneyship and make it more effective. Right? You just explain one way you can make it more effective. You know, having been a prosecutor and having you know, had the, the, um, the experience of walking into court with 60 or 70 files mm -hmm. and having to sit down and handle 60 or 70 files behind a desk with, uh, with lawyers is a great mm -hmm. Um, background, a great experience for someone who is seeking this job because not only do I know the job as a manager would know it, because I have run a law firm, but I know the job as a grade one deputy inside the office because I did that job. Mm. It was hands on. It was hands on. Okay. Uh, as, as part of our session here, Carmen, uh, what steps or plan would you implement to make the uh, city attorney's office more effective? Well, there's a number of things. First off, I, uh, um, I'm going to bring in uh, one man that has a number of years of experience as a chief deputy. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've asked him to come out of retirement to do that. And that man is Kurt Leibzay. Okay. We are going to restructure the city attorney's office management in terms of how crimes are handled. And I'm going to s assemble a task force of present day city attorneys and the, the, the new chief deputy and sit down and look at the effectiveness of each and every department and how that department reports to the city attorney and through what chain of a command okay. and then restructure the the um, the office um, chain of command so that it will be become much more hands-on for the city attorney himself to okay. be looking at these things to determine the effectiveness of it okay I want to know what is going on in the city. I want to be the one that makes sure that we are safer. Not that we feel safe, but that we actually are safer in this city. Okay. And as part of that, Carmen, you'd, you'd work on improving the bureaucracy, the communications, and making sure that you would know what's going on on a day-to-day -day level so you can set policy and make things better. I plan on having the, 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 the different chiefs of each division in that office report directly to me and inform me on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. Not only of that department, but I plan to integrate myself with the other city prosecutors. Okay, the, the, in, the various in, cities, including the district attorney. Yeah, let's talk about it. in the adjoining cities. Uh, exactly. Other than the city of Los Angeles, and and work on a a continuum of policies so that the enforcement in those cities, mm -hmm. because what happens in Inglewood is going to happen in L. A. Mm -hmm. What happens in Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach, and the adjoining cities around the city of Los Angeles yes. is, is is going to happen in L. A. And it's important that each of us in those uh, municipalities have a, co a cohesive, consistent policy of enforcement of the law so that the, the, the no goodniks mm -hmm. can't run from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and hide, hide from enforcement. Yes. And I plan on personally attending the county prosecutor's meetings on a monthly basis uh, with my um, cohort, Steve Cooley, the district attorney of LA, mm -hmm. and work as a team. And this will make the, your role as city attorney more effective. Uh, oh, definitely. Okay. I mean, when you're when you're working uh, as a team throughout the county of Los Angeles with every city within that that county, that you cannot help but being a much more effective uh, uh, prosecutor, especially when you target particular types of crimes.